Good afternoon, everybody. Today is the third session on accounting for managers, and today's topic is financial statement. Financial statement means one is income statement, and the second one is the position statement. Income statement comprises of trading account and profit and loss account. And the position statement speaks about the balance sheet of the organization. First, we will discuss about the trading account. Trading account is the tabular presentation of the equation of gross profit. And the purpose behind preparation of the trading account is to ascertain either the gross profit or the gross loss of the organization during a particular period. First, tabular presentation of equation of gross profit, if that is trading account, then what is the equation of the gross profit? The equation of the gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. Sales means the gross sell minus the sales return if any during that particular period. Sales return has to be deducted from the gross sales to find out the net sales. And from the net, that net sale, the cost of goods sold need to be deducted to find out the gross profit. And this cost of goods sold is represented by the opening stock. That means stocks at the beginning of the year plus purchases. Purchases means the net purchase year from which the, if there is any purchase return that has to be deducted from the gross purchase and then the net profit has to be taken into consideration for equation of the gross profit. So the equation of gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold and cost of goods sold is represented by opening stock plus purchases plus direct expenses minus closing stock. That means the stocks at the end of the period. So here, if the equation of gross profit is finally taken into consideration, we can say that it is sales plus closing stock minus opening stock minus purchase minus direct expenses. That means here there are five items out of which two are with positive symbol and three are with negative symbol. The items with positive symbols are sales and closing stock. And the items with negative symbols are opening stock, purchase, direct expenses. If the sales and closing stock, the summation of sales and closing stock is more than the opening stock, purchase and direct expenses, then the balancing figure would automatically appear in the debit side of the trading account and that is nothing but the gross profit. There is every possibility of the reverse also. The, in case of reverse, what will happen? The opening stock, purchase and direct expenses, its summation may exceed the summation of sales and closing stock. In that case, the balancing figure in the trading account will automatically appear in its credit side. And when the balancing figure appears in the credit side of the trading account, that is represented by gross loss because the total of revenue and closing stock is falls short than that of the opening stock purchases and direct expenses. So if we analyze each and every item, opening stock means stock at the beginning, purchase means the net purchase, that means the gross purchase minus purchase return, and the direct expenses mean the expenses incurred for bringing the goods from the place of purchase to the place of effecting sales. The entire expenses which are incurred from that point to this point would be considered as the direct expenses. And direct expense 
is an item which has to be taken into the trading debit side of the trading account. And in the right hand side of the trading account, which is called the credit side of the trading account, we can say that it's sales. Sales means the gross sales minus the sales return and the closing stock, that means the stocks at the end of the year. These two items have to be summed up in the credit side and these three items, direct expenses may be, there may be different items under direct expenses. It may be wages, it may be carriage in work, it may be employee, it may be uh, transportation in work, all these things. Whatever expenses we have incurred for bringing the goods from the place of purchase to the place of effecting sales are all coming under the direct expense. If there is any transit insurance, that will also form part of direct expense and all such direct expenses will be shown in the debit side of the trading account. So after taking all the items into the trading account, we need to make the balancing of the trading account and the result would be the gross profit or the gross loss. If we refer to the format of the trading account, we can see, see like this. In the left hand side, which is called the debit side of the trading account, that is first opening stock, then purchase and for the profit. From the amount of the gross purchases, the purchase returns need to be deducted and then direct expense. And under direct expenses, there are different subjects like carriage in work, wages, fuel and power, octroi, etc. And if you refer to the credit side of the trading account, the first item would be the sales. Sales means the gross sales incurred during the year. And from that gross sales, if there is any sales return during that particular year, that has to be deducted and the next item is the closing stock. Closing stocks means the stocks at the end of the period for which the trading account is being prepared. If the sales plus closing stock is higher than the opening stock plus direct expenses plus and purchases, then obviously the balancing figure in the trading account will appear in the debit side and that debit side, that balancing figure would be termed as the gross profit. If the reverse takes place, that means opening stock, purchases and direct expenses, if they are more than the sales and closing stock, then automatically the balancing figure will appear in the credit side and that would be the gross loss. So after that, after preparation of the trading account, which shows either the gross profit or gross loss, the next step in our hand is to go for preparation of the profit and loss account. Profit and loss account is a nominal account. And it is not only a nominal account, but it is said to be the graveyard of all the nominal accounts. Graveyard means the end of one's life, the burial ground. Once the profit and loss account, why it is called the graveyard of all the nominal accounts? Because once the profit and loss account is prepared means all the nominal account existing in the books of the organization will be closed and they will come to an end. No expenses, no incomes will exist thereafter. No expenses account, no incomes account will exist after preparation of the profit and loss account. That's why the profit and loss account is called the graveyard of all the nominal account. But the very first step involved in preparation of the profit and loss account is to transfer the gross profit or gross loss from the trading account. That has to be transferred from the trading account to the profit and loss account and profit and loss account. And that is the very first item in the profit and loss account to be reflected while preparing the profit and loss account. Profit and loss account, as I said, that it's a nominal account. And the principle of nominal account says debit of losses and expenses, credit all gains and incomes. That means all items of credit will be either an income or it will be treated as a gain. And all items in the debit side of the profit and loss account is either an expense or a loss. So in that principle, if we transfer the gross profit from the trading account to the profit and loss account, profit means 
it would obviously go to the credit side of the profit and loss account. And if there is gross loss, then it will be appearing in the debit side of the profit and loss account. For the gross profit and gross loss, for passing the entry for gross profit or gross loss, if that is taken into consideration, then the entry for gross profit would be trading account debited to profit and loss account. Truly speaking, there are two sets of entries for gross profit and there are also two sets of entries for gross loss. But if we sum up both the entries, then the resultant entry would be trading account debited. First entry would be, if, if we take the gross profit into consideration, the first entry would be gross profit account debited, sorry, trading account debited to gross profit account. And the second entry would be gross profit account debited to profit and loss account. So gross profit debited in the first entry, sorry, gross profit credited in the first entry and gross profit debited in the second entry and that would be nullified debit and credit gross nullified and the resultant entry would be the trading account debited to profit and loss account. Just reverse would be the entry in case of the gross loss. Then after taking the gross profit or gross loss from the trading account to the profit and loss account, the next step is to take all the indirect expenses to the debit side of the profit and loss account, all the indirect incomes to the credit side of the profit and loss account. If you refer to the profit and loss account as shown in the screen, the first item is advertisement, it's an indirect expense. Second item is the traveling expense, it's also an indirect expense. Salaries, bad debts, carriage out work, bank charges, rent, printing and stationery, postage and telegram, telephone, depreciation, repair and maintenance, interest on loan, all these things are indirect expenses in nature. And all indirect expenses and losses will form part of the debit side of the profit and loss account since it is a nominal account. And all the items appearing in the credit side of the profit and loss account must be an indirect income, interest received, discount received, commission received, all these are items in the nature of indirect incomes, sorry, indirect, yes, indirect incomes. Indirect incomes will appear in the credit side of the profit and loss account and indirect expenses will appear in the debit side of the profit and loss account. And it, thereafter, the balancing of the profit and loss account has to be made. And if the balancing figure is appearing in the debit side of the profit and loss account, then obviously it is net profit because the revenue or the incomes are more than the expenses. That's why it gives rise to the net profit. The reverse may happen. In case of happening of the uh, appearing of the balancing figure in the credit side of the profit and loss account, that would be obviously the net loss because the expenses are in excess of the incomes shown in the profit and loss account. So the resultant of the profit and loss account would be either gross profit, sorry, either net profit or net loss. Then after preparation of the income statement through the trading account and profit and loss account, we need to go for preparation of the position statement, which is called the balance sheet. The balance sheet speaks about the assets and liabilities of the organization the assets and liabilities. That's why it is otherwise called the financial statement or the, sorry, the position statement. But profit and loss account and trading account, they are prepared for a particular period, either for a year or for a half year or for a quarter or for a month or for even a week or for a day. But the balance sheet is not prepared for any particular period. It is prepared as on the close of the day for which the profit and loss account is being prepared. Balance sheet is called the position statement. The left hand side of the balance sheet is called liabilities and the right hand side of the balance sheet is called asset. Since the balance sheet is not an account, its item, it doesn't have any debit side or credit side. Profit and loss account is the left hand side of the profit and loss account of the trading account is debit side 
and the right hand side of the trading account or profit and loss account is called credit side because they are accounts but the balance sheet is not an account since balance sheet is not an account it doesn't have any debit side or it doesn't have any credit side similarly in the trading account and profit and loss account you have, you can see that each and every item is prefixed by the word to in the debit side and by the word by in the credit side but in case of balance sheet no to and no by because it's not an account it's a statement balance sheet is prepared as on the close of the year and balance sheet doesn't have any debit side or credit side its left hand side is liability and the right hand side is asset and the items in the balance sheet they do not start with the word the prefix word to either in the left hand side or by by in the right hand side these things have to be remembered while preparing the position statement of the balance sheet so what are the contents of the balance sheet the balance left hand side of the balance sheet is liability and the right hand side of the balance sheet is asset and the major items which are coming under liabilities it may be capital capital means the owner's equity whatever amount invested by the entrepreneur or by the owner of the business in the in the business itself in the earlier classes we had a discussion about what about the separate entity concept separate entity concept says that the business and the owners of the business are completely separate and distinct from each other irrespective of the status of the organization the status of the organization may be a proprietorship concern the status of the organization may be a partnership firm the status of the organization may be a registered company the status of the organization may be a trust association of person or whatever it may be but whenever any organization is taken into consideration which account is being prepared it must be having its owners so owners are completely and separately completely separate and distinct from the business itself that's why the capital is being treated as a liability in the balance sheet because the balance sheet is prepared for the business not for the owner the amount of capital invested by the owner in the business is the obligation of the business to pay it back to the owner that's why anything payable is liability and this is the reason why capital is liability then the net profit whatever net profit is earned during the year has to be added with the capital because that is also liability why net profit is a liability at times it creates confusion in the minds of the students that net profit is asset and net loss is liability but it's totally false the reverse is true net profit is liability why net profit is liability because the profit earned in the business during a particular period is what it is the resultant of the investment made by the owner and the efforts given by the owner to its business and the result of that the profit is is being earned in the business so who is entitled to enjoy this profit so obviously the owner so when the owner is entitled to enjoy the profit we can interpret the net profit is an amount which is payable by the business to the owner because it is receivable by the owner from the business so anything payable is liability so the amount of net profit is payable by the business to the owner that's why it is receivable by the owner so it will increase the owner's equity so it has to be added with the capital being a liability just reverse in case of a net loss when there is a net loss in the organization during a particular period it is due to what it is due to ineffective management of the proprietor or proprietor's concern so when there is loss when the organization has sustained loss it is the obligation or the responsibility of the owner to reimburse the amount of loss to the business that means the amount of loss sustained by the business is receivable by the business from its owner concern when anything is receivable that is an asset that's why when we are offering treatment to the net loss 
it is being deducted from the capital account of the own concern for that particular year. Next item in the balance sheet in the liability side is secure loan. Either you can say it may be loan from bank. Loan from bank may be of different types. It may be a term loan, it may be a cash credit, it may be a bill limit, it may be your uh, overdraft, etc. etc. So any liability means any owing, borrowing, or obligation. So loan taken from bank would be a liability because the business is liable to pay it back to the bank or to the financial institution from which the loan is taken. That's why it is a liability. Then any other loan, the loan may be taken from friends, from relatives, from other sources. So that is that cannot be regarded as a secure loan. It may be unsecured loan. So unsecured loan is being segregated from the loan loan from banks. Then bills payable. Bills payable is another obligation which is to be payable to the drawer of the bill by the business concern. That's why the bills payable is also a liability in the hands of the organization. Then the next one is sundry creditors. Sundry creditors means what? When the goods are purchased in credit, from whom it is purchased, he is a creditor. From whom the goods are purchased in credit, that party or that person is a creditor. And that party or that person will remain as a creditor till he, his payment is being completely made by the organization. Individually, he is a creditor, and summation of all the creditors is called sundry creditors. So, since that amount is payable by the organization to the parties from whom it is being purchased on credit, that is called a liability in the hands of the organization. So, that is being shown, sundry creditor is being shown in the liability side. Then, bank overdraft. Bank overdraft means suppose we are having deposits in our current account. We are having deposits in our current account. Current account is a deposit account, and all deposit bank deposits are our assets. So obviously, it need to be it need to appear in the asset side of the balance sheet. But overdraft means when we have issued a check and we don't have sufficient balance in our bank account to honor that check. So in that case, what will happen if the bank? Taking the credibility of person has passed that check. Suppose the check issued is for 10,000 and the balance appearing in our current account is only 5,000. So 5,000 balance is there, but a check is issued for 10,000. If that particular check is being honored by the bank, the result would be what? Our bank balance, our current account balance will show a negative figure. 5,000 was the balance, 10,000 check is honored thereafter. That means obviously the bank account will show a negative balance of 5,000. So that is called bank overdraft. So that bank overdraft is also a liability because it is our obligation to repay that amount of overdraft to the bank as and when the bank calls for the repayment. So these are the common items appearing in the liability side of the balance sheet. Next, come to the asset side. In case of asset side of the balance sheet, the first item is appearing is goodwill. Goodwill is an intangible asset. Intangible asset means the assets which cannot be touched, which cannot be seen, which, can, which are not having any physical existence. So also the case of patent, the next item. Goodwill, patents, copyrights, technical know-how, all these things will appear as intangible assets. Intangible assets are fixed assets. Fixed assets, there may be other fixed assets which are called tangible. Tangible fixed assets, if you would like to the, uh, refer to the next item in the asset side of balance, that is the third item, machinery. Machinery is a tangible fixed asset. Goodwill and patents, they are intangible fixed assets, but machinery is a tangible fixed assets. The next item is land and building. Next is furniture, then computer. All these items are tangible fixed assets. 
If you refer to the classification of assets we have already discussed earlier, if you refer to that, the classification of assets, it may be tangible or intangible, it may be movable or immovable, it may be fixed or current, or it may be fixitious. Here, if you refer to goodwill, patents, machinery, land and building, furniture and computer, stocks, consolidators, etc., investments, which are the items of different I, uh, the assets being reflected in the asset side of the balance sheet. Goodwill will come under the intangible fixed asset. Patent would be coming under intangible fixed assets. Machinery would come under tangible fixed assets. Land and building would come under tangible fixed assets. And moreover, it is immovable also. It's not movable. Machinery is an immovable asset, but land and building is an immovable asset. But both of them are tangible in nature. Next item is furniture. Furniture is also a tangible fixed assets. Tangible fixed assets are those which can be seen, which can be touched, which are having physical existence. So furniture, obviously, it is satisfying all the criteria of a tangible asset. So it is a tangible fixed asset. Next is stock. Stock inventory or stock at the end of the year. It may be stock of finished goods. It may be stock of raw materials. It may be stock of working process, whatever it may be. Stocks, it is tangible asset, but it's not a fixed asset. It is a current asset. Current assets are those assets, are those short-term assets, which can be easily converted. There are three characteristics of a current asset. Easy convertibility into cash. Second one, to be used in the process of production. Third one is to be consumed. If any of the criteria is being fulfilled by any of the short-term asset, it will be regarded as a current asset. First one is easy convertibility into cash within one accounting year or one accounting cycle. Take the example of your sundry data or stock of finished goods. If the stock of finished goods are being sold in cash, then the stocks are easily converted into cash. If this is not a cash sale, it is a credit sale, then what will happen? It will give rise to sundry data. Stocks will be converted into another current assets that is Sunday data. Sunday data, when it is realized after 10 15 days, after the end of the credit term, then it is converted into cash. So, although the stock is not directly converted into cash in case of credit sale, but the conversion takes place in a very short span of time, that's why it is called current asset. Then the next item. If the stock of finished goods are uh, taken as taken as current assets because it is converted into cash, then what about stock of raw materials? Raw stock of raw materials are obviously not meant for sale, but still then it has to be treated as a current asset because it fulfills the second condition of becoming a current class current asset that is to be used in the process of production. Stock of raw materials have to be used in the process of raw materials, then it will be converted into working process. Then working process will be converted into finished goods. Finished goods can be converted into cash in case of an instant cash sale. If it is not a cash sale, then finished goods are to be converted into Sunday data in case of credit sale and Sunday data is to be converted into cash. But all the, the entire cycle is completed within one accounting cycle or one accounting period. That's why it is called the current assets. Bills receivable also a current asset. Investments may be a current asset, may be a fixed asset because if the investment is long term in nature, then it will be obviously meeting the criteria of the fixed assets. But if it is a short term in nature, then it will come to the category of current assets. Then prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses satisfies the third condition of becoming a current liability. Prepaid expense means the expenses paid in advance. The expenses paid in advance is called prepaid expense. That means expenses paid which are not become due. So in that case, 
prepaid expense are not subject to conversion into cash it is also not fulfilling that it is to be used in the process of production but still then it is to be regarded as a current asset because it fulfills the third condition of becoming a current liability means to be continued within one accounting cycle or one financial year suppose there is a prepaid expense for rent of 3 months the financial year ends on 31st march but the rent is being paid up to 30th of june that prepaid expense would be would be shown as prepaid rent in the balance sheet but when in the next financial year we go on consuming suppose one year, one month is being consumed month of april has consumed that means the prepaid expense out of 3 months one month prepaid prepaid rent is being consumed or not it will be booked to expenses and it will be deducted from the assets to that extent or not exactly if all the three months have passed then the entire prepaid expense is being consumed and it will be debited to the profit and loss account and it will be credited to the prepaid expense account so prepaid expense is also a current asset then cash in hand cash at bank they full all of them are current assets because they fulfill the first condition of becoming a current liability that means eg convertibility into cash whenever we are having any bank balance in our bank account and we are withdrawing that then the bank account bank balance is being converted into cash so ready convertibility or eg convertibility into cash is the first criteria of becoming a current asset so the items will be appearing in the asset side and in the balance and in the liability side of the balance sheet for that there is an arrangement there are two types of arrangements on, on the basis of which of the order on which the items are to be shown in the liability side or in the asset side that is otherwise called the marshalling of balance sheet what is marshalling of the balance sheet marshalling of the balance sheet means the order in which different items of assets and liabilities will be appearing in the liability side and in the balance sheet uh, asset side of the balance sheet there are two orders one is <clears throat> on the basis of liquidity and the second one is on the basis of permanence if the balance sheet is prepared on the basis of permanence then the most long term liability would be the first item of liability in the liability side of the balance sheet and the last item of the liability side of the balance sheet would be the most short term liability so also the case of asset side when the balance sheet is prepared on on the basis of permanence then the most long term asset would be the first item in the asset side of the balance sheet the most long term asset means here it is goodwill it is continue once goodwill is appearing in the liability asset side of the balance sheet means it will continue for a longer period of time land and building all all fixed assets you can take into consideration fixed assets are those assets or those long term assets which are held by the organization for earning revenue or income and the benefit from which will be derived in a series of future years so when we are having a piece of land on which we have constructed our factory building or office building or shop building or trading house whatever it may be that means the asset will exist for a longer period of time and it will go on giving benefit to the organization from year to year and from next several years we will be getting benefit out of that so that is what so that is a fixed assets that is a long term asset so when we are preparing the balance sheet on the basis of permanence then in the asset side of the balance sheet out of fixed assets or out of tangible fixed assets the land and building would be the first item then if there is plant and machinery that would be the second item if there is furniture and fixtures that would be the next item if there is computers etc that would also be the next item and after placing the fixed assets then the chance will go to the current assets and loans and advances if there is an investment that will be just appearing after the fixed assets 
Investment means the long-term investments. If we are, if the organization has invested in buying of shares and bonds of other organizations, that will be regarded as investment. So investment is also an asset, and that will also appear in the asset side of the balance sheet. <coughs> The balance sheet, the liabilities are incorporated in the left hand side and the uh, assets are, in, uh, are placed in the uh, uh, right hand side of the balance sheet. And as a mathematical provision, the liability side, the summation of the liability side must tally with the summation of the asset side. That means all assets must be equal to all liabilities. When we prepare the balance sheet, we take the net profit or net loss from the profit and loss account and that has been adjusted with the capital account of the organization on that particular day. If there is net profit, it has to be added to the capital and if there is net loss, it has to be deducted from the capital to find out the net capital at the end of the period. If there is any drawing, that means if the owner of the organization has drawn anything for either for its personal use for or otherwise, then that will also be reduce the capital of the owner concern and that has also to be shown by way of deduction from the capital account. So this is about the items appearing in the financial statements. That means either in the trading account or in the profit and loss account or in the balance sheet. There is another account which is also form part of the what is that uh, income statement which is called the manufacturing account. That means if the organization is indulged in doing some production, that means some production activity is being undertaken by the organization, then before preparation of the trading account, the organization ought to prepare the manufacturing account. Now the question is, what is the objective behind preparation of such financial statements? There are three main objectives, which are the objectives of financial accounting. They are the objectives also, the financial statements. The first one is to know the profitability of the concern. To know the profitability means either the gross profit or gross loss, that is not the final profit. The final profit is the net profit or net loss. So in order to, net, to know the net, net, net profitability of the organization, we need to prepare the profit and loss account and the resultant of the profit and loss account is either net profit or net loss and that speaks about the profitability of the concern. So that is the very objective behind preparation of our financial statement. Financial statement means the first part of the financial statement that is called income statement. <laughs> Then the next objective of financial accounting or the, you know, or, or else the next objective of financial statement, preparation behind profit, uh, financial statement is called to know the position of assets or liabilities or to know the financial position of the organization that is prepared or that is, uh, that we came to know by preparation of the balance sheet. Balance sheet is prepared on a particular day, that's why the balance sheet is always suffixed by the word as on. But in case of trading and profit and loss account, you will see that profit trading and profit and loss account for the year is not as on, but the balance sheet is always as on. The balance sheet is a static photograph of the organization which speaks about the assets and liabilities of, of, the, of that particular organization as on the closing day of the financial year. So now we have seen that different items of incomes are appearing in the credit side of the profit and loss account, different items are of expenses are appearing in the debit side of the profit and loss account and certain items of liabilities are appearing in the left hand side of the balance sheet and items of assets are appearing in the right hand side of the balance sheet. So for that <coughs> <coughs> The concepts and conventions of accounting plays a very vital role. When we have discussed about the concepts and conventions in the earlier classes, we came to a conclusion that there are different, there are about 10 concepts and about four conventions. When those concepts and conventions are discussed, we have discussed 
that uh, there was a concept called what is that uh, accrual concept that accrual concept plays a very vital role for preparation of the financial statement like profit and loss account balance sheet because this accrual concept of accounting accrual concept the essence of the accrual concept of accounting is the incomes have to be recorded on the basis of earning and expenses have to be recorded on the basis of incurring and it doesn't matter whether the expenses are paid or not and incomes are received or not so this very concept accrual concept gives rise to four major items one is called outstanding expenses that means expenses due but not paid then prepaid expenses expenses paid but not due or otherwise other in other words you can say expenses paid in advance and the third concept is third item is your accrued income accrued income means income earned but not received then the last item is income received in advance that means income received which is not earned income income received in advance means income received which is not earned so that is a liability that's a current liability so that will be appearing in the liability side of the balance sheet and accrued income accrued income means income earned but not received it is receivable it is receivable means it would be appearing in the asset side of the balance sheet as a current asset it is earned but not received suppose we are having a fixed deposit in the bank the period of fixed deposit is say for 10 years the amount of fixed deposit is say 1 lakh the rate of interest is say 10% per annum so every year the period of fixed deposit is for 10 years but every at the end of the year that means on maturity which will come after 10th year then only we will get the principal along with the cumulative interest of the accumulated interest for all the 10 years but what happens at the end of every financial year at the end of every financial year the interest if the rate of interest is 10% and the principal amount is 1% sorry 1 lakh then at the end of the first year there would be interest of 10000 in the hands of the Uh, organization but that amount of interest is an accrued interest because it is not received by the organization it is earned but it is still remaining with the bank that's why it is receivable from the bank by the organization that's why it is a current asset so it will be appearing in the asset side of the balance sheet similarly in case of expenses it is it may be either outstanding expenses or it may be prepaid expense outstanding expense is a liability because it is payable payable to the persons to whom it is uh, it's an obligation of the part take the example of outstanding salary outstanding salary means salary due but not paid when we have engaged the workmen in our organization their salary is due to be paid at the end of the month if the salary is not paid by the end of the month then it begin outstanding salary for outstanding salary the entry would be salary account debited to outstanding salary account or salary payable account so that salary payable account or outstanding salary account is a correct liability because it is payable in nature just the reverse of the salary outstanding is prepaid salary or prepaid expenses prepaid expenses means expenses due but not paid if the rent is paid in advance that is called prepaid rent prepaid rent is it is receivable in nature that why that's why it is being treated as a current asset so all the accounting concepts and conventions are very important role in preparation of the final account the final account may be income statement or it may be the financial statement <laughs> in this case the concept of revenue and capital is a very vital role revenue expenses and capital expenses revenue income and capital income in that context we should look, examine what is the difference between expense and expenditure expenditure means any outflow of cash 
or cash equivalent which either give rise to the value of any asset or reduction in the amount of liability of the organization suppose 1 lakh rupees is paid for buying of an overhead projector when 1 lakh rupees is paid for buying of any overhead projector the outflow of cash will be there to the extent of 1 lakh and what happens in the counterpart that projector is coming into the organization which is an asset so that outflow of cash of rupees 1 lakh gives rise to the value of an asset of the organization to the exact amount of rupees 1 lakh so what it is so it is an expenditure but in case of expense what happens outflow of cash or cash equivalent is common in both the cases of expense as well as in case of expenditure but in case of expense what happens that outflow of cash it neither give rise to the value of any asset or reduction in the amount of any liability take the example of salary paid on or on the due date when the salary paid on the due date then outflow of cash to the extent of or to the amount of salary paid would be there but that outflow of cash does it resulted into any increase in assets of the organization does it give rise to the value of any asset of the organization certainly not secondly does it reduces any liability of the organization that is also no there is no reduction in the amount of liability <coughs> that's why it is an ex- it has to be treated as an expense outflow of cash or cash equivalent which neither give rise to the value of any asset or reduction in the amount of liability is called expense expenses are revenue in nature whereas expenditures are capital in nature capital items they will not form part of the income statement like trading account or profit and loss account it will go to the capital items will go to the balance sheet so expenditures like purchase of furniture purchase of computers construction of land and building repayment of loan all these things will form part of the balance sheet the the non recurring items expenditure is non recurring and capital in nature and expense is revenue in nature and recurring in nature recurring items are coming or meeting the criteria of being a nominal account so profit and loss account contains all the items of nominal accounts only nominal account means expenses and losses incomes or gains so if you refer to the profit and loss account each and every item advertisement is a nominal account being an expense traveling expense salary bad debts carriage outward bank charges rent printing and stationery postage or telegram telephone charges depreciation repair and maintenance interest on loan all these are expenses in nature depreciation depreciation means what depreciation means a gradual diminution in the value of fixed assets due to three reasons wear and tear obsolescence or a flux of time when the value of any fixed asset is being reduced either due to wear and tear wear and tear means usability when we put any asset into use its value will automatically go down and down so that is the first reason of depreciation secondly obsolescence that means outdatedness if the asset even if it is not put to use but due to development of technology the asset got obsolete take the example of vcr and vcds even if they are in perfect use condition you cannot find a buyer for uh, buyer for those items why because it has no use today its usability has become zero because of development of modern technologies similarly the third reason behind depreciation is uh, passage of time or a flux of time take the example of leasehold asset leasehold land if the leasehold land for 30 years and 30 lakhs of lease premium was paid at the time of acquisition if 
we have done nothing suppose that piece of land is not put to use and land is suddenly an item which is not subject to obsolescence but still then if all the 30 years have passed we have done nothing then the entire lease rent would become zero if 50 percent of the lease period passed then 50 percent of the lease rent will be reduced so that is called exactly if it is not depreciation it is called amortization amortization is applicable in case of intangible assets and here the legal property is an intangible asset so while preparing the financial statements like profit and loss account and balance sheet we must be very much careful about the revenue and uh, revenue and non revenue items or capital recurring items or non recurring items recurring items will be appearing in the profit and loss account and non recurring items of expenditure will be appearing in the balance sheet so this is the importance of the concepts and convention in the preparation of the final account or in the financial statements similarly <coughs> When we look to the balance sheet, we have seen the horizontal balance sheet which is having the left hand side as well as the right hand side. There is a question why the left hand side of the balance sheet is liability and the right hand side is asset. If we we'll refer to the trial balance, all these items, the balance sheet and the profit and loss account are being prepared from the trial balance because the trial balance is the very basis. The figures are available in the trial balance and from the trial balance only we used to prepare the trading account, the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. Of course, there are certain items which are outside the trial balance which is being considered for preparation of the balance sheet and the trading and profit and loss account. There may be adjustment items like closing stocks, depreciation, etc, etc. So, why, the question is why the left hand side of the balance sheet is liability and the right hand side is asset. If we refer to the principle of trial balance, the principle of trial balance says debit all assets and expenses, credit all liabilities and incomes. And if we refer to any, any particular account, the left hand side of the account is debit and the right hand side of the account is credit. So if all assets are to be debited, then if we follow that principle, then in that on that basis, the assets should have been in the left hand side of the balance sheet, being the debitable assets, being the principle of uh, trial balance, assets, debitable assets and expense. But the balance sheet has been defined by AAA, American Association of Accountants have defined balance sheet as the mirror of the business. In the mirror, what happens? The objects are reflected in a reverse way. That means the left became right, the right became left. The liabilities which should have been in the credit side, they came to the left hand side. And the assets which should have been in the left hand side, all the assets go to the right hand side, being the items to be fairly presented in the balance sheet or in the financial statement, which is otherwise called the position statement. So by preparing the items of, by, by taking the items or by choosing the items from the trial balance to take into the income statement or to the balance sheet, how to, what would be the modality of choosing the items? The principle of trial balance says debit all assets and expenses, credit all liabilities and incomes. So all items appearing in the de debit column of the trial balance is either an asset or an expense and the items appearing in the credit side of the trial balance is either a liability or an income. So when choosing the items for preparing the profit and loss account first, if we are taking the items of debit side of the profit and loss account into consideration, then we must pick up the items from the debit column of the trial balance. And for choosing the items appearing in the credit side of the profit and loss account, we must choose the items or we, or we must pick up the items from the credit column of the trial balance because the items of incomes must be there in the credit column of the trial balance. The credit column of the trial balance constitutes of items of income 
and liabilities. So when we are preparing the balance sheet and picking up the items of liabilities, then we must look to the credit column of the trial balance because the credit column of the trial balance consists of liabilities only. Then when we are preparing the asset side of the balance sheet, then we must look to the debit side, debit column of the trial balance because the debit column of the trial balance consists of assets. The goodwill, the patents, the copyrights, the technical know-how, plant and machinery, land and building, furniture and fixture, computer, inventory, sundry data, investments, all these items, cash and bank balance, whatever items of assets are there, they must be there in the debit column of the trial balance only. And the liabilities, the capital, the loan from bank, either secured or unsecured, the loan from others, either secured or unsecured, the bills payable, sundry creditors, bank overdraft, outstanding expenses, all these items of liabilities being appearing in the credit column of the trial balance, they will be picked up from that only and they will be reflected appropriately in the liability side of the balance sheet. But since the trial balance is agreed as a mathematical prism, we have seen from the beginning of the double entry system of accounting says that each debit has got an equal and corresponding credit and vice versa. So when each debit has got an equal and corresponding credit, then the summation of all the debits must tally with the summation of all the credits and taking that into consideration, the trial balance is being prepared. And after preparation of the trial balance, which is the summarizing part of the definition of the accounting, we, the next step of uh, final account preparation of the next step is preparation of the final account and the preparation of final account as we discussed about the income statement and the balance sheet the income statement speaks about the gross profit the the trading the first part of the income statement is the trading account which speaks about the gross profit or gross loss but that is not the final profit of the organization and in order to know the final profit of the organization we need to prepare the profit and loss account and that profit and loss account speaks about the net profit or net loss of the organization. And that net profit or net loss has to be taken into the balance sheet, has to be adjusted with the capital. And if there is a net profit, it is to be added with the capital because it will, it will increase the owner's equity or the capital's fund. And if there is net loss, it will be deducted from the capital because it reduces the capital of the owner concern. Then after, after considering the net profit or net loss or after adjusting the net profit or net loss of the uh, organization during that particular year, if there is any drawings in the hands of the proprietor during that particular year, that has also to be deducted from the capital account because that also reduces the capital balance in the hands of the owner. So that would be the net capital at the end of the year and that will be appearing in the balance sheet accordingly. Capital our net profit, less drawings, that would be the net capital appearing in the liability side of the balance sheet, being the first item in the balance sheet. Then secured loans, unsecured loans, uh, current liabilities and provisions, that will be appearing one after the other in the balance sheet. There are, what I said, there are two orders of preparation of the balance sheet. One is on the basis of permanence, where the most long-term asset will be the first item in the asset side of the balance sheet and the most current asset or the most short term asset will be the last item in the asset side of the balance sheet. So also the case of liability, the most long term liability would be the first item in the liability side of the balance sheet and the most short term liability like bank overdraft, outstanding expenses, etc. would be the last item in the liability side of the balance sheet. There is another way of preparation of the balance sheet that is called this is called permanence basis and that is called on the basis of liquidity. On the basis of liquidity, the reverse, the order is just reverse. The order is just reverse means the most short term asset will be the first item in the asset side of the balance sheet and the most long term asset will be the last item in the asset side of the balance sheet. So also the case of liabilities. If the balance sheet is prepared on liquidity basis, then the most short term liability like outstanding expenses and bank overdraft will be the first item in the liability side of the balance sheet. And the most long-term liability like capital reserve and surplus will be the last item in the balance sheet. That is called on the basis of 
liquidity. So that is the preparation of the trading profit and loss account and balance sheet, which are called the financial statement of the organization. Thanks. Thanks to all.